Dear Provost Ilkka Niemelä, dear family, dear friends and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I warmly thank you all for sharing this great moment with me. Kiitos kaikille läsnäolijoille tämän hetken jakamisesta kanssani. Before my installation lecture, I will talk one of the key themes in my area, auditing, and I hope that you will enjoy the next 20 minutes or so. As you know, in Alto University, we have several schools and broad range of different disciplines, different to each other. So I think that it's in place that before my actual lecture, I'll briefly introduce accounting and auditing my discipline um, to you, to, to this audience. <clears throat> Within the family of business studies, business disciplines, um, accounting is most closely related to um, finance and business law. Accounting is also related to economics, especially microeconomics, as in accounting we record and communicate economic events to those interested in performance of an economic entity, for example, a firm. For this reason, accounting is often referred as the language of business. Accounting is typically divided into management accounting and financial accounting. In management accounting, we focus on accounting as a vehicle for managerial decision-making within the firm. Whereas in financial accounting, we focus on uh, reporting economic events to outside providers of finance, investors, and creditors. As business studies in general, also accounting research is often linked to other disciplines such as psychology, sociology, or economics. In my own research, I have studied functioning of auditing as an economic phenomenon from different perspectives, such as pricing of audits, demand for auditing, benefits from auditing, economic incentives for individual auditors. As such, my work represents what I could call mainstream economic-based auditing research. And now I move on to my lecture on the information content of audit reports and value of financial statement audits. So let me start with a short overview to give you an idea of what I'm going to talk about the next 18 minutes or so. Let's see. First, I'll briefly explain an idea of auditing and role of audit report. Um, <clears throat> then I explain the concept of information content used in, in, in research. After that, I uh, quite quickly uh, pinpoint some ideas about different streams of research, and then I summarize what we can and conclude what we can say based on these studies about information content of auditing research and the value of financial statement audit. So let's start with an idea of an auditing. <clears throat> so when we start a business, we need some outside funds and when there are providers of funds to our, our firm, we become accountable for those funds to the providers of them. Um, this is a classic principle agency relationship, which is characterized by information asymmetry and conflict of interests. And this information asymmetry simply means that we, as managers that run the daily business, we have superior information of the state of the business and our own effort that we have put there. And those outside providers of funds, they are, at least to some extent, they are 
they have to rely on what, what we tell about the state affairs what, on our reports. Secondly, the conflict of interests uh, is also quite obvious that not always the agent or the management of the firm have the incentive to act in the best interest for the providers of funds. <clears throat> So, taken together, these two forces or situations, they create what we call information risk. The risk that management report is biased. I suppose parties very well understand that situation that creates an incentive to hire, oops, to hire an auditor, and the auditor gathers, collects evidence, and, and, and then uh, makes a decision, opinion, on the behavior and, and the state affairs and reports that in the auditor's report. So, in essence, the idea of an audit and the role of audit report is to reduce that information risk that management reports are biased. So, yes, so let's move on to look at the, how we can study information content of these audit reports. So, uh, in, in research we need some observable reaction and we are, uh, most often, we focus on reactions of providers of finance, that makes a difference there. And we can, in that respect, we can ask two questions there. First, we can ask that, does this audit report convey information, not convey financial reports uh, that are unaudited? And secondly, we can ask that, does this audit report convey information, not conveyed by a different kind of audit report? So in the latter case, we compare audit reports with different wording. Okay, so let's move on to see what research has to say on the first question when we compare financial statements that are audited and those that are not audited. Uh, quite um, consistently, uh, f first of all, uh, in this setting we cannot study um, limit, uh, um, public companies as they are always audited. There's a mandatory audit requirement there, so we need to focus on privately held, predominantly small firms. And also, those firms, as they have no access to public capital market, we also focus, we need to focus on uh, cost of debt and, and uh, access to, to, to credit rating. And uh, these studies in this area quite consistently show us expected that having an audit decreases cost of debt and improves credit rating. So in, in that sense, we can say that auditing uh, does add value and, and increases firm value those those client firms. Let's move on to see that what happens when we compare different kinds of, of audit reports to each other. Uh, so th then the, this picture becomes much more complicated. First of all, let's look at the different kinds of different types of audit reports. What we do here is the starting point here is a standard wording report that is often referred as clean report, meaning that there's and uh, nothing we actually need to pay attention to except that auditing has been conducted. Very o sometimes there's a situation that the auditor needs it, it necessary to add information there, even if auditing concludes that financial statements uh, are fairly presented, not biased. So there's an additional information, for example, emphasis on financial uh, problems. Uh, but, but sometimes there are material misstatements in financial statements, and 
uh, and then an uh, auditor needs to qualify an opinion, as we say, and in extreme cases where these misstatements affect the, the, the whole set of financial statements, we say that we are uh, totally disagree, we give an adverse opinion. Luckily, these are quite, quite unusual. Well, what it all means from perspectives of readers of, of financial statements, first of all, we could say that whenever we deviate from standard wording clean report, it is potentially bad news, especially if it highlights something that is there in financial statements, but it highlights, for example, potential financial problems, etc. So that, is, that could be regarded as bad news. If we are in the opinion that there are some material misstatements, it's fair to say that they are bad news. And in unfortunate case of adverse opinion, they are really bad news. All right, so let's look at what the research has to say when we have these different kinds of bad news. The first stream of, stream of research that I talk about is, is so-called event studies that look at the capital market reactions, prices of stocks, that, that how they react when there are these bad news in audit reports. And it seems that in these event studies, it seems that markets are very clever and, and effective in learning these issues as they act prior to the release of these bad news. The, there are other sources of information that are more timely that tell the story already there. Sometimes uh, uh, these bad news come as a as a, negative, as a surprise, and then researchers have been able to capture this negative uh, uh, reaction there in the market. The, the challenge in, in, in these studies is that it is extremely challenging, difficult to control for all the, the, the impact of all the different sources of information available there in the market at the event of release of these audit reports. Let's look at the second uh, stream of research, which is the ability to predict bankruptcy. So um, these studies are motivated uh, by the, the uh, typical uh, discussion in, in, in public press and, and uh, uh, that after publicized bankruptcies, there are these discussions where were the auditors, why they didn't give any warning about this forthcoming uh, bankruptcy. Now I have lost all my savings here. Okay, so, so, so this is the motivation for these studies, and these studies show that auditors are not very good in predicting bankruptcy at all, actually, that there are prediction errors both ways very often there are warnings, but the firms don't go bankruptcy. And, and, and also, also there are um, firms that go bankruptcy and don't receive any warning. Well, strictly speaking, um, and that is also professional's response, is that by, according to rules and regulations, it is not the purpose of an audit to predict bankruptcy. The, the idea of an audit is to, is, is to evaluate the fairness of the financial statements, which is clearly a different thing than, say, than broadcasting this, that whether this firm is going to go bankruptcy or not. Okay, so nevertheless, it is the public, uh, uh, general public and, and public press that, that, that sees that they repeat this question, there, there are always these discussions that where were the auditors? Okay. The third uh, uh, stream of research, Lenders' decision in experimental studies. So these studies um, show that when there's uh, information published there in, in audit report that is already there, that, that these uh, professionals can read that in financial statements, there is no impact. Sometimes impact on decisions, but sometimes there are impact on this decision-making process in a way that it triggers requests for additional information. 
When there are these studies that concentrate on these warnings for bankruptcy, if you will, what we call going concern opinions, these studies have documented increase in risk premium and increase in rejection rate for loan applications. In other words, that, that these um, credit, uh, uh, these uh, loan officers, they do react uh, these warning signs for, for, for future possible uh, financial problems. There, there are pros and cons here also for, for, for this. Uh, uh, as experiments, they are very effective in controlling confounding effects as, as they are experiments, but on the other hand, these decisions that we made, they are not real life decisions and, and not real life consequences when we do these loan decisions. So that must be kept in mind when we, when we think about these findings. There's one more stream of research, or actually only one sole study, my own study with Stefan Sundgren, where we look at the credit decisions in an indirect way using archival data, and we ask two questions there. First of all, do bad news in order to report, report affect uh, credit availability, and secondly, whether different kinds of bad news um, you know, have a differential effect on, on credit availability. We group them in, into three different groups. These um, going concern problems, indicating financial problems, then there are these material misstatements, and violations of credit rights that should be also be interest of those that are creditors. And uh, we had a large scale Study. We had over 50,000 audit opinions and more than 3,000 modified opinions, and we we estimated dozens of different models and, and ran different tests. What we found, nothing. And uh, <coughs> regardless of of the type of bad news, there, there was nothing there. No impact on credit availability. When we, when we try to explain ourselves what's happening here is that, is that there, there is a, a one study, Berger and Udell, in the area of, 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 of small business finance, where they explain that lenders use multiple sources of information. Some of the sources are called relationship lending based non-accounting data, whereas others are so-called financial statement lending based on hard financial statement data. And they explain that when the firm has weak cash flow and or financial statements are non-transparent, low quality, those lenders move to use non-accounting data, which I think in a way is sort of a paradox when we think about auditor reporting in these small firms, that when it's time to modify the opinion, they have already moved to use some other kind of, of information. So let me summarize and make some conclusions here. So first of all, to question number one, having an audit instead of not having an audit, it clearly in increases uh, 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 improves the situation, reduces information risk, and increases firm value. Question number two, it's more mixed. And in experiments, we find that these different wordings, they make a difference there in, in, in decision making. Whereas in archival studies, these that are capital market studies, and our own studies in, in credit availability for private firms, we found no effect. So there is much less clear this picture. So what it all means is that I would like to quote here a state-of-the-art paper that says that auditor's report has symbolic value but conveys little communicative value. How I interpret that based on what I just said is that having an audit, it does make a difference but when we look at the differential effect of different ways of wording, wording it's, it's much more uh, subtile, this effect. And I would like to conclude with a final note that there's a challenge for research. Audit reporting is like an iceberg. When we look at this public report, we only see the tip of the iceberg. 
great majority of all this reporting is between, actually between auditor and the management. And this reporting is aimed to correct the misstatements and to improve the financial statement quality. So when we study the information content of these public financial statements, oh, sorry, these, these um, public audit reports, we measure only the value of the tip of the iceberg, not the whole iceberg. And with these words, I would like to end, conclude, and thank you for your attention. Thank you.